throughout Generation 1 of Monster High, we got to see a couple of new characters and some designs that were just only featured throughout the animated movies, and I've always been curious to see some of these designs translated into physical doll playline form of Monster High, and so today, Emma and I are going to be working on a new custom doll from a character featured in one of our favorite Monster High movies, A Ghoul's Rule, and that character is Miss Claire. Claire was sadly only ever featured in the Ghoul's Rule movie, but somehow it seemed like she was able to build lasting relationships with some of our most beloved characters, such as Frankie and even Jackson. I guess I would understand the idea of, like, making a Claire doll kind of defeats the purpose of Monster High, considering she's not a monster, and then some people might say, well, Jackson's not a monster, but, like, he is a monster because he transforms into one. I don't know. It's whatever. I feel like the Claire was only kind of designed by the animation team and wasn't really thought out as like something that would be added into a permanent like world of Monster High. So today Emma and I will be making our own version of Claire as a Monster High doll with a couple of alterations, nothing too major, but I'm very excited nonetheless to get started on this custom. So let's get into it. Hey guys, it's Emma, and I am actually the one starting this video, which is not very usual, but let's get into it. So, we're going to be starting out with this Dawn of the Dance Frankie, and I am so sorry, Monster High fans, I know she is beloved, but she was a repro, and we needed her. I'm sorry. Also, this is how I pull off heads. I've never had one break on me. I don't use hot water, I don't use heat, knock on wood, that it stays like that. Now I'm going to take some needle nose pliers and I'm going to go in and remove all of the plugs in Frankie's head. And with those same pliers I'm going to go in and I'm going to remove all the plugs. This is the most satisfying part but also it, my hand starts to cramp like real bad afterwards. The glue seepage in this head wasn't too bad so it wasn't too nasty. And now this Frankie is ready to be painted and oh, she already got some paint on her, but that's okay because her face is going to get painted anyway. We're going to go ahead and we're going to paint the scalp black because Claire's hair is black. I don't usually get to paint, so painting on Frankie's head was satisfying for me. It's just following the part line all around. For this head, I ended up using Soran black hair, and then for her blue streak, I used nylon. So it like sticks out a little bit, but I like it like that. Now I'm just going to go ahead and start with the part line and I'm going to plug the entire head. Then I realized I was wasting hair, it was too long, so I cut it shorter. Now her part line is done, so we're going to go ahead and we're just going to work in a circle around the rest of the head, and we're going to have to make our own middle part line. Now I'm just trying to make sure that I make the middle part exactly in the middle because I don't want it to be off to the side or anything, and this Frankie did not have a middle part. Oh, 
Okay, now your girl has a middle part, and, um, emo Frankie is giving everything they need to make a Frankie with all black hair. I think that would be so cute with, like, a little bit of blonde, or, like, white, if you consider it white, but it would be so cute to, like, come on, Mattel, please. Then I just added Claire's infamous blue streak. Like I said, it is a nylon, so I think it does stand out. That's why it's standing up like that, like not like the rest of the hair. I prefer to work with saran hair. Nylon hair is something. Now I am boil washing it so it lays nice and flat. Now I'm just going to run some cold water over top of it so that it stays where it is. Using Fabri-Tac, I'm going to seal the plugs inside the head and they won't turn yellow or anything like that because, um, you know, your girl Frankie, her hair is always turning yellow, but luckily, this one. Now with everything done for her hair, I can put her back on her body and she is ready to be painted. But before that happens, it's me. I had to give her some scene queen hair. Like, look at how good she looks. Especially with the Dawn of the Dance makeup. Literal legend. Literal legend. To get started on Claire's face up, I need to remove Frankie's factory paint using some 100% acetone and a Q-tip. We decided to use a Frankie for this custom because Frankie has very human-like features with the human ears and human nose, human lips. Um, only thing is Frankie kind of has a big forehead, but that doesn't really matter because Claire has bangs. <laughs> One thing about Frankie that is definitely not human-like would have to be the neck bolts, but I just took an X-Acto knife and cut those off pretty easily. And also the other big thing about Frankie is that Frankie is green and not a human skin tone, so I just went in with some watered-down acrylic paint and a peachy tone and painted Frankie's face, neck, and hands because Claire's outfit is going to be um, covering most of her body. 
For Claire's face-up, Emma really wanted me to go with a more new goth approach to her makeup instead of the solid black eyeshadow, which makes it really difficult for you to see any of her eyelashes. So I am making her eyes a slightly smaller shape than the mold just to leave room for all of the eyeshadow that you'll be seeing later on. Something that really helps me when I'm doing symmetry on face-ups is to start off with a very thin line on the sketch layer. Don't go in too thick at first and then make things gradually thicker to how you like it. When it comes to like the eyeliner on top, I don't want to start off with something really really thick and then go to the other side and then it's like completely off center, you know? And for eyelashes it's the same thing. I start with a really thin curved line and then make it a lot thicker closer to the lash line and then that way it stays really thin and pointed at the ends. For the iris shapes I just make sure to do a half circle and make sure that the half circle is like connecting with the top lash line so you can see like it fully rounded out towards the bottom lash line that way it makes your doll look like it's looking forward or more upward instead of downward. To keep a little bit of the essence of Claire's original makeup, I am still drawing this teardrop shape that Claire has. I don't understand why Claire has like a teardrop on her face. I don't know if it means something in like a goth culture, but um, the only meaning I know for it is not a very good meaning. So um, Claire, what's going on? So for the rest of the eyelashes, I like to start at the very ends of the lashes. That way I'm not drawing them too close together on accident. I can like evenly measure how far apart I want each eyelash to be when I start at the ends instead of the base. Then of course as the eyelashes get closer to the inner corner I make them smaller and smaller each time. For Claire's makeup she's going to have a cut crease so I am drawing the crease all the way to the inner corner which I normally don't do but I do like how this looks for like specific makeup looks like a cut crease I think it looks pretty nice. I am however connecting the crease to the tip of her last eyelash and you will see why because it's like part of the makeup look. For Claire's bottom lashes, I'm making them a bit more feathered out than normal. I like to start towards the middle of the eye and then work my way both in and outward. Obviously, I wanted to make Claire look a little bit angry, so I brought her eyebrows down pretty low and kind of gave her a little bit of a RBF, I guess. <laughs>
I decided to outline Claire's upper lip just to give me a better guideline when I'm fully painting the black lipstick because I don't really want to mess up with black acrylic paint. And after I finished this sketch layer, I went in and sealed everything with a layer of Mr. Super Clear. And because I fully painted this face already, I'm just going to go right in to my acrylic paints. Right now she's kind of giving Shigo, and I love it. <laughs> So for Claire's eye makeup, like I said, Emma wanted this to be a more new goth approach, so I'm taking a gray chalk pastel and I'm putting that all around basically where the crease is on the eye because then it'll look like the gray is being blended out underneath of the cut crease, which I will paint on later. Now I'm going back in with my black acrylic paint to go over the eyeliner and eyelashes. So basically what I wanted to do here is make the eyeliner really thick at the end, so that is why the eyelid crease is connecting to the eyelash, it's to better like give me uh, the shape I wanted <laughs> for the black eyeliner and it kind of like blends with some of the eyelashes but not completely. And of course can't forget to go over Claire's black teardrop. Somehow Claire has really golden eyes. I think she must be wearing colored contacts because I don't know how that is a human trait. I've never seen anybody with golden eyes, but um, if you guys have, prove me wrong. I don't know. <laughs> Going back onto Claire's cut crease, I'm using a silver metallic acrylic paint to cover the lid and then I think it looks very cool and shiny and glamorous. <laughs> I also highlighted the iris with a really pale line of yellow acrylic paint. It's It looks basically white, honestly, but um, it is in fact a very pale yellow. Then I finally filled out her scleras with my white acrylic paint.
Then of course to add a little bit of depth into the eyes, I'm adding a little bit of shadow in the squares with a light blue acrylic paint. And then I'm outlining the irises again in my black acrylic paint. And for the finishing touches on the face up, I am using a dotting tool to add the highlights into her eyes. Like always, if you're looking for any of the materials I'm using for my face ups, I have my material list linked in the description. It's an Amazon affiliate link, but it has everything that I like to use in it. And here is Miss Claire's face up all finished. I think she looks very stern and mature. Of course, I needed to add some high gloss varnish onto the lips. Of course, cannot forget that. But overall, I'm really in love with how she's looking so far. Emma made this really nice long sleeve sweater for Claire, and I'm just going to go ahead and use some acrylic paint to add on the skull details and the stripes onto the sleeves. I'm just freehanding this since the fabric is black. I don't have any like white chalk to draw on the fabric to make a little stencil for myself, but it's whatever. And to clean up any of my mess, I went in with a little bit of black acrylic paint, like to make the eyes a little bit bigger and more even and fix up the nose. And yeah, that is pretty much it for the sweater. Sorry, I don't have a lot of content for the outfit, guys. It's very simple. Um, I made this sweatshirt. Morgan painted it. I got very sick while we were filming this, so I just kind of had to rush through things a little bit, so I didn't get the chance to film. But it still turned out great. And I'm happy with it, but I did film some of the shorts. For the short pattern, I just used leggings, and then I cut them where I desired the length to be, and that was it. Very, very simple outfit on Claire. Now we can do her hair and styling it. Now Morgan didn't really like the bob, like I could tell she didn't like it, so I didn't want to give her a B.O.B. A F a bob so i decided to give her like a lob almost um first we're gonna cut the bangs we'll get into that also peep my mannequin in the background what should her name be she is unnamed unidentified Okay, bangs are cut, hair is cut, it is a lob, and I actually kind of like the lob. We kind of did not go exactly with the blueprint, but I think that it worked in our favor. I almost completely forgot the finishing touch to Claire's face is obviously her piercing. Is it a piercing? Is it a beauty mark? I'm not really sure. Now it's a piercing. <laughs> so I just added a tiny little gem with some Elmer's glue all. And yeah, that's it for her piercing. And with that, I do believe that our Claire custom is all finished. Another alteration we decided to make to Claire was to give her a pair of Dalmonias because, you know, we're obsessed with the Dalmonias. We gotta show them off as much as we can. And Claire's normal shoes are kind of just like brown boots, which is a little bit boring. Um, so we wanted to spice it up, add something to her that also fits her goth style. And I promise we're not going to be using the Dalmonias on every single custom we do. I just really love them and I enjoy using them. <laughs> um, and we also may use them on another custom that we're working on. I'm not sure yet. We'll see. But anyways, I really, really love how Claire turned out. Emma did a really great job on the outfit and the reroute. Miss Queen starting the video off. So go check out Emma if you aren't already following her. I don't know why you wouldn't be. Um... And yeah, this Claire custom will be up for auction on our next Whatnot show, which is the 31st of August, which is this Thursday, if you're watching this as soon as I post. We're also going to be selling some Monster High Dolls Ever After High Dolls, our custom 3D printed doll shoes, and there will be a giveaway for the Annabelle Collector doll towards the end of the show. And of course, like always, I would love to give a huge, huge shout out and thank you to our patrons. Thank you so much to Hannah, Sophie, Lily, Ohio from Ohio, Emmy Lisas, Christian, Cat Lady, and Anson. 
Like always, thank you guys so, so much for your support. I've really been struggling to stay motivated lately. I've been in like a funk where I don't want to do anything on social media, but I'm working my way out of it. And with you guys reading your comments is always super, super sweet. And I love uh, interacting with you guys. So thank you so much. And like always, stay safe, stay hydrated, drink some water. And I would love to see you in the next video. So hopefully I'll see you next time. And yeah. Bye.